Hey gang, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Biology One Online, and today we're going to talk about population ecology. And so, if you remember back from uh, Biology One, uh, we talked a little bit about the differences between a population and the differences between that and a community. Um, and a population is all of one species living in the same area. So what are some examples of some species uh, living in an area that we may want to study and uh, learn about their ecology? Well, a good example would be beavers. We definitely want to learn about them and about their ecology and study their populations because beavers, as we all know, build dams. And those dams can have an adverse effect on the area around them, and sometimes that includes us. So they're known as the ecosystem engineers simply because the dams that they build change the ecosystem. Where this was a, uh, a forested area, there is now a, a standing pond. That's a completely different ecosystem. So they, they built a new ecosystem. Well, most people think, well, why do, why do they do that? Why do beavers do what they do? Well, first of all, what do beavers eat? Well, a lot of people say, well, obviously they eat trees. And that's kind of right, but it's also not right because most people think that they eat the woods and that's the part they're chewing on. Well, the thing is beavers can't climb trees to get to the leaves and the soft bark, which they do eat. Um, but they can cut the tree down and bring the food to them. And so they chew down the tree and then they strip off the branches and the leaves and the bark. And they need to be able to store that over the winter because most trees, deciduous trees at least, don't have leaves on them during the winter time. So they store up food during the summer. And where are they gonna store it? Well, if we stored food, we put it in the refrigerator, keep it nice and cold and use it for later. They can't really do that, um, but when they cut down that wood from the tree, they use it to build a dam. That dam, at least in colder regions, will ice over, and it forms like a refrigerator. They can store the leaves and the branches and the bark down in the, underneath the water, down in the mud, and it acts just like a refrigerator. It keeps the food lasting longer, and they can then go during the wintertime, leave their lodge, which is the area they live in inside the dam. They can leave that, go into underneath the pond, get some food and bring it back up and eat it. It's a really smart uh, idea and a really cool way to, uh, uh, to live. But being ecosystem engineers, sometimes they interact with humans and they're not so good for us. I mean, in this case, this is a, a, a drainage culvert that runs underneath a, a highway and it's completely dammed up. This is supposed to be a place for water to run so it doesn't go over the road. Well, Beavers kind of stop that. Now that's kind of posing a danger for humans. So we want to study their population so we can better understand them, so we can get an idea uh, uh, of how to manage that population. So that way we don't have to kill them and remove them or harm them to get them to stop. We can understand them a little bit better in other ways and maybe find another means, uh, a less lethal means to uh, helping uh, control their population. So what's some information we would collect about them if we we're actually gonna go out and do a study with beavers? Well. First thing is we need to know how many of them are there. What's the number of individuals? So looking at this picture of cows in a field, if you just took a guess, say 150, 200 or so, and you don't have to count each and exact one, but you want to get an estimate. Um, another thing we didn't want to look at is, well, that's the number there are there, but how are they, uh, what's their density like? How close are they to each other? Because this is also 150, 200 cows, but it's, it's much more densely spaced or densely packed. There's not a lot of space in between them. That's definitely gonna affect the population, um, and especially the area where they are. Um, but once we look at how dense they are and how many there are, we can also look at what's their distribution. How are they spread through their environment? Are they even, are they clumped, are they random? Um, even distribution is not something that we normally see. We do see it in nature, but it's not the most common one. Um, if you drive down uh, the highways of Mississippi and you look at the trees, every once in a while you may see the trees tend to line up in rows. That's because most of the forests in Mississippi were actually planted by paper companies. And we know that we want to spread each tree out to give it enough room and space and, and availability of resources so that way it can grow the best. So we actually space them out. It's the same thing with crops in a field. We, we plant corn in rows. Um, and that gives each one an opportunity to get just as much sunlight as the other. Think about even, if you know where one individual is located, then you have a really good idea of where the other individuals are, are located. Have you ever played the game Battleship? Battleship uses an even distribution. Once you find where one is, you have a pretty good guess as to where the next one's going to be located. Um, another type of, of, of distribution we see, and we see more often, is clumped. 
resources in an environment are not evenly spread. They're not, there's not just as much food and water at this location as there is at another location. Generally things, resources tend to be clumped up. And so we generally find organisms living in an area to be clumped as well. Um, so imagine if we're looking at a picture of a desert, like a big map of a desert. Um, these clumps may represent oases where water is located because water is a limited resource. All the things living there would need that resource, so we would find them clumped around a resource. We see this on large-scale maps of, of, of the globe. All the places where people are located are generally around water sources, uh, along rivers, uh, ponds, uh, or they'll... Um, or, or places where other resources sometimes they'll even make dams and create their own uh, uh, reservoirs of water. But clumped is much more common for us to see. Now, if the resources in an environment are truly um, uh, spread out evenly, um, in other words, if, if there's just as much grass here as there is over here, um, generally we'll see random distribution. And we do see this a lot. As a matter of fact, in this picture of the cows, uh, this herd is randomly distributed through this pasture because there's grass everywhere. Now, at this point in time, there's grass everywhere, but, and that's the resource that they're looking for right now. But when it gets a little bit warmer and they need to get a drink of water, you'd see them start clumping around where the water is. Or if it's the middle of the afternoon and they've got water, they've got food, but they're just tired, want to take a nap, they generally will clump underneath trees where the shade is because at that point, shade is a limited resource. Um, so we see random and clumped a lot more than we see even. Whereas something we do see even, uh, flamingos nesting on the, uh, on, on the shores of a lake. Uh, flamingos, being really tall, they don't like to squat all the way down to the ground, and they don't really fly up in trees to build nests. So what they do is they get on muddy banks of, of, uh, of ponds and, and lakes, and they build their nest up out of mud, and they build it up really high. So that way, they lay their egg in it, and they don't have to squat that far to get to their, get to their egg to sit on it to keep it warm and help rear the offspring. Um, but they're territorial, and there's not a lot of mud bank to go around for usually a lot of, a lot of flamingos. So where's the next flamingo going to be? Well, it's going to be just out of pecking distance of all the other flamingos. So if you know the average length of their necks and you know where one of the flamingos is, you have a pretty good idea of where the other flamingos are going to be. And when you see aerial views of a flamingo nest, they're pretty evenly spaced. Not exactly lining up in rows, but still really evenly spaced. Um, so we do see all of these in nature. Even is less likely to be seen, but we do see clumped and random uh, um, occur quite often. Um, so all the data that we use to that we collect with all this, all these numbers that we collect, helps us to manage species. Um, and there's many cases where we want to manage a species. Obviously, with the beavers, we definitely want to do that because they could be a pest, but some other species are not pests, like game species. We want to manage those populations. So next, I'll show you an example of uh, how to use this data to manage species.